62 years have now passed since the establishment of the constitution in Iran and we can confidently state that until 1963 this constitution was devoid of any true meaning. What is the real meaning of democracy? First and foremost, it means that every citizen should have the right to express his opinion and to vote on questions concerning his own fate. But under our constitution, not only was half the population, that is to say the women, deprived of the right to vote, but of the other half, it was the men of influence, the landlords and capitalists, and the ruling class in general, who in practice controlled the majlis, which was the cradle of the constitution. The regulations relating to elections were such that a simple agricultural worker or a small landowner or an industrial worker stood no chance of being elected to the majlis. Such people did not even have any say in the election of others because most of them were illiterate and their votes were in practice commodities that could be bought and sold by influential people. For real elections to be held, it was therefore first of all necessary for all the electoral laws to be reformed. Furthermore, it was necessary that under the new elections, the women of Iran should enjoy equal rights with men, including the right to vote and stand for both houses of parliament. The first of these two conditions became reality with the approval of the principle of reforming the electoral law which was submitted to the nation in the 6th of Bahman referendum and the second was approved by a decree of the Council of Ministers dated March 7th, 1963. Thus it was that for the first time in the history of the Iranian constitution, the nation was given the opportunity to take part in elections held in a genuinely democratic manner and to elect a parliament that was not dominated by the landlords. The most important change brought about by the 6th of Bahman revolution in the field of election was, however, the granting of the franchise to women. Perhaps the younger generation now studying the contemporary social history of Iran in our schools will have difficulty in believing that in their lifetime there could have been a law which placed the women of Iran, who numbered in their ranks so many university professors, teachers, doctors, lawyers, writers, poets, artists and other talented and educated women in the same category as lunatics and criminals. On February 27, 1963, I issued a decree based on the spirit and meaning of the principles of the 6th of Bahman revolution and relying on the decisive national support for these principles in which equal electoral rights for men and women were announced. I feel that in doing this, I discharged one of the greatest duties expected of me by the Iranian nation. Women are thus taking an increasingly more important and more effective part both quantitatively and qualitatively in the great social and economic activities of the country as well as in the reconstruction of Iranian society. This is an essential requisite of any progressive and developed society today. Our revolution has carried out its duty towards the women of Iran by freeing them from their age-long captivity and by enabling them to take part in every kind of activity and progress in all material and spiritual spheres of society. From here on, it's up to them to show themselves worthy of both this freedom and of the ancient tradition of the noble and humane civilization of Iran and to lay the foundation for a future that is in keeping with our past. It is my belief that the women of Iran will satisfactorily carry out this mission.